For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas. We go to New York City, where the United Nations General Assembly has approved a document outlining the rights of indigenous peoples worldwide. The document was endorsed by Consensus Monday at the start of the first World Conference on Indigenous Peoples. More than 1,000 delegates from indigenous communities, various heads of state and UN officials attended the session. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon says indigenous peoples are central to the discourse of human rights and global development and have an important role in the push for more sustainable use of natural resources. Guatemalan peace activist and indigenous leader Rigoberta Menchu also spoke at the UN today where she praised the progress of indigenous rights worldwide but expressed some concern. A partir de estos años, since the 1980s, the indigenous communities have suffered serious human rights violations. They have also been victims of genocide, femicide, and ethnocide. These are concepts that have not been established in the resolutions. And it is necessary to leave a precedent to strengthen the means to observe and enforce respect of the rights of indigenous people during this General Assembly. Del cumplimiento de las herramientas. The First World Conference on Indigenous Peoples will end tomorrow. Bolivian President Evo Morales opened the conference by saying his country is the first to fully implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Our correspondent in Bolivia, David Dortry, has more. Bolivian President Evo Morales provided the opening remarks at the first UN World Conference on Indigenous Peoples. This is the first conference of its kind. It's a high-level meeting of the UN General Assembly. There are around 2,200 indigenous representatives from roughly 100 countries participating. The idea of the conference is to promote the advancement of the rights of indigenous peoples, while also looking for ways to ensure the implementation of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. In his speech, President Morales mentioned how Bolivia is the first and only country to fully implement the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples into the country's constitution. Bolivia's new constitution was approved by popular referendum in 2009. He also posits global climate change as one of the most pressing issues facing humanity, particularly in regards to the rights of indigenous peoples. He later spoke of advances made in reducing extreme poverty in Bolivia. A recent UN Development Program report found that Bolivia experienced the largest relative drop in extreme poverty in Latin America from 2000 to 2012. Reporting from La Paz, I'm David Doherty with Telesur. And thanks to David Doherty, indigenous people represent a large percentage of the global population. That's according to statistics by the United Nations and the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean. Together, indigenous peoples make up the largest minority group in the world. The United Nations says that indigenous people hold 20% of the Earth's land mass, which harbors 80% of the world's remaining biodiversity. They also account for remarkable diversity around the world. There are more than 5,000 distinct groups in some 90 countries. They make up more than 5% of the world's population, equal to 370 million people. In Latin America, the indigenous represent 8.3% of the region's total population and total 45 million people. There are about 826 different indigenous groups in the region. In Caracas today, the Venezuelan Minister of, Ju of Interior and Justice, Miguel Rodriguez Torres, revealed a fourth video linked to opposition groups seeking to destabilize the government of Nicolas Maduro. They hoped to do that by carrying out a series of attacks against political leaders throughout the country. Our correspondent Rachel Boothroy continues to follow this developing story. This morning, the Venezuelan Minister of Domestic Affairs, Peace and Justice, Miguel Rodriguez Torres, released yet another incriminating video of the right-wing extremist, Lorenz Saleh, uh, in which he gives further details of the attacks which he and his terrorist network plan to carry out later this year in October. Uh, the video follows on from the arrest last week of fellow militant uh, Josman Paredes, who was arrested uh, after a video emerged of him confirming that the terrorist network did in fact have uh, a number of bombs at its disposal as well as support from outside the country. Uh, today's video is the fourth to emerge of Lorenz Saleh with a third having been aired on Friday linking him to the Venezuelan opposition mayor of Caracas 
Antonio Ledesma. Uh, you will be able to see our full report on the videos later on today at www.telesurtv.net slash English. I'm Rachel Boothroyd reporting for Telesur from Caracas, Venezuela. And once again, thanks to Rachel. Today, Iraqi lawmakers revealed that the Islamic State group has killed over 300 Iraqi soldiers using chlorine gas. According to reports, the soldiers were killed in the northern Iraqi city of Fallujah, but it remains unclear when the attacks took place. This is not the first time that officials have suspected that Islamic State forces are using chlorine gas to carry out mass killings. Earlier this summer, a global chemical weapons watchdog found evidence that chlorine gas was being used as a weapon in northern Syria. Islamic State forces have already seized a large part of Syria. The group entered Iraq in June. Over 130,000 Syrian refugees crossed into Turkey over the weekend as Islamic State forces have advanced north and seized several Kurdish towns near the Turkish border. On Friday, Turkey opened eight of its nine checkpoints on its border with Syria to allow the Kurdish refugees to enter. Since last Tuesday, the Islamic State has attacked 64 villages in Syria's northern Kurdish region, forcing thousands to flee their homes. According to UN officials, this is the largest number of refugees to cross Turkey's border in a two-day period during the last three years. Afghan President-elect Ashraf Ghani has congratulated the country in its first democratic transition of power. The president struck an agreement on Sunday with his rival Abdullah Abdullah to form a unity government after months of dispute over who was the rightful winner of June's runoff presidential election. سیاسی مسائل سیاسی ده حل لارا غوان سیاسی مسائل پا توپک پا توری نحل کیجی we end on a lighter note. The Broadway musical The Lion King is officially the biggest box office money-making theatr money theatrical play in history. The Disney production played its 7,000th Broadway performance September 3rd. The previous record holder of box office earnings was Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera. This play has reported a worldwide gross income of $6 billion. In film, Avatar holds the world record in gross earnings with $2.8 billion. The musical has been running since 1997 and its profits have now exceeded $6.2 billion. The Lion King follows the journey of Simba, a young lion born into animal royalty. When Simba is ousted into the wild by his evil uncle, he overcomes adversity with the help of his jungle friends to reclaim his crown as king of African wildlife. Just in case you forgot the story. More on those stories and others at our website, telesurtv.net slash English. For Telesur English, I'm Cody Weddle. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.